to my youtube channel that is learning and programming with chetan friends in this particular video we will going to discuss about one of the very important question in java programming language and the question is what is the difference between double equal operator and dot equals method in java programming language so let us try to understand about the difference between double equals operator and dot equals method on the basis of the following points which is currently visible on your screen and in later part of this video we will try to understand the difference between this operator and this method by the help of programs and class diagram so let us try to understand our first difference on the basis of type so if we talk about this double equal then it is an operator in java programming language and it is also known as equality operator whereas if we talk about dot equals then it is a method which is present inside java.lang dot object class in java programming language now let us try to understand our next difference on the basis of comparison so if we talk about double equals operator then it is used for reference comparison or we can also say that it is used for address comparison what i means to say here is that if you are comparing two objects by using double equals operator then it will check if both the objects are pointing to the same location in a memory whereas if we talk about dot equals method then it is used for content comparison what i means to say here is that dot equals operator will check the values of both the objects now let us try to understand our next difference on the basis of uses so if we talk about double equals operator then it can be used with primitive data types along with boolean and we can also use this equality operator with objects whereas if we talk about dot equals method then we can use this method to compare the content of different objects now let us discuss about our next difference on the basis of overriding so if we talk about equality operator then in that case we cannot override this operator whereas if we talk about dot equals method which is present inside our object class then in case when our class is not overriding our equals method then by default it will call the method which is present inside our object class and the equals method which is present inside our object class is having same implementation as that of the equality operator but i means to say here is that the equals method which is present inside our object class is used for reference comparison and we can override this method inside our class so that we can use our equals method for content comparison so on your screen you can see that we are having one class with the name b and in our class b we can provide the implementation of our equals method so that we can use our equals method for content comparison and suppose we are not overriding the equals method inside b class then it will by default use the equals method which is present inside our object class and in case of class c and class d if we have not overrided then it will look for the equals method inside its immediate parent class that is a and if we have not overrided our equals method inside a class then it will call the equals method which is present inside our object class and my dear friends dot equals operator is already overrided inside our string class as well as inside our wrapper classes and this method is also overrided inside our collection framework classes so that it can be used for content comparison now let us try to understand about equality operator and dot equals method by the help of java programs and class diagram so here i have created one class with the name important methods and operators and inside our class i have created one main method and three static methods with the name object comparison string comparison and primitive comparison so we will try to understand the use of equality operator and dot equals method with objects string and primitive data types so let us first try to understand the use of equality operator and dot equals method with objects so in this statement you can see that i am creating an object with reference variable name as object 1 so in our memory diagram you can see that we are having two memory with the name stack memory and heap memory and inside our stack memory let us first try to concentrate on this object comparison method so when we will run our program then our main method will be called and a memory is allocated for main method inside our stack memory and inside our main method an object comparison method will be called so a separate stake trace will be created for our object comparison method now friends in this statement as i have already told you that we are creating an object with reference variable name is object 1 so here you can see that our object 1 is pointing to an object inside heap memory with memory address as 1000 and in our next statement we are creating one more object with reference variable name is object 2 so here you 
can see that our object to reference variable is pointing to an object in heap memory with memory address as 2000. And friends, in our next statement, you can see that our object 3 is allocated with a value of object 1. So, in our memory diagram, you can see that our object 3 is referring to the same object inside heap memory which is referenced by our object 1. Now, let me run our program first and then we will try to understand the working of equality operator and dot equals method so friends in this statement you can see that we are using our equality operator and we are trying to comparing our object 1 with object 2 so friends as i have already told you that our equality operator is used for reference comparison what i means to say here is that our equality operator will check whether both the objects is referring to a same object inside our heap memory. So in our memory diagram you can see that our object 1 is pointing to an object with memory address as 1000 and our object 2 is pointing to an object with memory address as 2000. So our object 1 and object 2 is referring to different object inside heap memory. That is why in our console you can see that we are getting the result as false. Now let us try to understand our next statement. So here I am using a dot equals method to compare our object 1 and object 2. So friends as you can see that our object 1 and object 2 is of object type and as I have already told you that the equals method which is present inside our object class is having the implementation which is equivalent to our equality operator. That is it will be used for reference comparison or address comparison. So here this statement is equivalent to this statement. And that is why in our console we are getting our output as false. So friends when we have to use a dot equals method for content comparison then in that case we have to override this equals method inside our class. Now let us try to understand about our next statement. So here we are using our equality operator to compare object 1 and object 3. So in our memory diagram you can see that our object 1 is pointing to an object with memory address as 1000 and our object 3 is also pointing to the same object with memory address as 1000. That is why in our console you can see that we are getting our output as true. And in our next statement we are using dot equals method which is present inside our object class. And the dot equals method which is present inside our object class is used for reference comparison or address comparison. So here our object 1 and object 2 is referring to the same object object inside our heap memory. That is why in our console you can see that we are getting our output as true. So friends in case when we are not overriding our equals method inside our class then our equals method will work similar to our equality operator. Now let us try to understand the use of equality operator and dot equals method with string and wrapper classes. So in our main method I am commenting this statement and I am uncommenting this statement so that now our main method will call our string comparison method. So friends in this statement you can see that we are creating an object of string class with reference variable name as string object 1. So in our memory diagram when this string comparison method will be called then a separate stack trace will be created for string comparison method inside our stack memory. And here you can see that our string object reference variable is pointing to an object inside heap memory with memory address as 3000 and with value as java. This is the value which we have assigned while creating our object. Now in our next statement you can see that we are creating one more string object with name string object object 2 and we are assigning the value java to string object 2 in uppercase. So in our memory diagram you can see that our string object 2 is pointing to an object in heap memory with memory address as 4000 and with value as java in uppercase. Friends here I would like to share one information with you that whenever we create an string object by using new keyword then at runtime it will create two objects with one object inside heap memory and second object with value as java inside our string constant pool. This string constant pooling concept is used for memory management so that any other object with same value can point to the same object inside string constant pool in spite of creating new objects in heap memory. Now here in this statement you can see that we are directly assigning the value java to our string object 3. So here you can see that our string object 3 is pointing to an object with value as java inside our string constant pool with memory address as 100. Now in our next statement you can see that we are assigning the value of string object 1 to string object 4. So here you can see that our string object 4 is pointing to the same object in heap memory which is being referred by our string object 1. 
and in our next statement we are assigning the value as java to our string object 5 so here you can see that our string object 5 pointing to an object with value as java inside our string constant pool now let me run our program first and then we will see that how our equality operator and dot equals method is working with string objects and other wrapper classes so in this statement you can see that we are using our equality operator to compare string object 1 and string object 2 friends as i have already told you that our equality operator is used for reference comparison or address comparison what i means to say here is that our equality operator will check whether both the objects is pointing to a same object inside our memory so here you can see that our string object 1 is pointing to an object with memory address as 3000 and our string object 2 is pointing to some other object with memory address as 4000 so as these two objects is pointing to different objects inside heap memory that is why in our console you can see that we are getting our value as false now let us discuss about our next statement so here we are using our quality operator to compare string object 1 with string object 3 so in our memory diagram you can see that our string object 1 is pointing to an object with value as java and our string object 3 is pointing to the value as java but it is inside string constant pool what i means to say here is that our objects is having different address in memory that is why in our console you can see that we are getting our value as false now let us try to understand about our next statement so here we are using our equality operator to compare string object 3 and string object 5 so here you can see that our string object 3 is referring to an object with memory address as 100 and our string object 5 is also pointing to the same object with memory address as 100 so as both the reference variable is pointing to the same object in memory that is why in our console you can see that we are getting our output as true so i hope that you are able to understand the use of equality operator for reference comparison now let us try to understand the use of dot equals method for content comparison so friends as i have already told you that our dot equals method is overrided inside our string classes and other wrapper classes and in case if you are not overriding this equal method inside our class then it will by default call the dot equals method of object class so in this statement you can see that we are using dot equals method for comparison of string object 1 with string object 2 so in our memory diagram you can see that our string object 1 is pointing to an object with value as java and our string object 2 is pointing to an object with value as java but it is in uppercase and the overridden equals method inside our string class is case sensitive that is why in our console you can see that we are getting this value as false now let us try to understand about our next statement so here we are using our equals operator for comparing string object 1 with string object 3 so our string object 1 is pointing to an object with value as java and our string object 3 is also pointing to an object with value as java so as i have already told you that our dot equals method is used for content comparison so our string object 1 and string object 3 is having the same content that is why we are getting this value as true in our console now let us discuss about our next statement so here we are using our equality operator for comparing string object 1 with string object 4 so here in memory diagram you can see that our string object 1 is pointing to an object with memory address as 3000 and our string object 4 is also pointing to the same object in heap memory with memory address as 3000 that is why in our console you can see that we are getting this value as true so friends i hope that you are able to understand the use of equality operator and dot equals method with string and other wrapper classes now friends let us discuss about the use of equality operator with primitive data types so now our main method will call primitive comparison method so friends this is our primitive comparison method and inside this method we will try to understand the use of equality operator with primitive data types so let me run our program first and then we will try to understand the use of equality operator with primitive data types so in this statement you can see that we are using equality operator for comparison of integers so as these two integer values are different that is why in our console we are getting this value as false similarly in our next statement we are using our equality operator for comparison of character data type so here these two values are different that is why in our console we are getting this value as false now in our next statement you can see that we are using our equality operator to compare the character type value with integer value and friends you might be thinking that why we are getting this value value is true in our console when we are comparing a character data type with 
integer value. So here this equality operator will compare the ASCII value of characters. As we all know that the ASCII value of character D is 100. That is why we are getting this value as true in our console. And we can also use our equality operator for comparison of boolean data type. So here in this statement you can see that I am comparing the value true with false by using equality operator. And as these values are different that is why in our console we are getting this value as false. So friends I hope that you are able to understand all the different differences between equality operator and dot equals method in Java programming language. And if you are having any doubts related to this concept, then you can write your queries in comment section.